I don't think people understand the power, probably because they've never been debt free, or if they were, it's for a brief moment. They don't understand the power of what that feels like. Welcome to the FNG podcast, where the Green Beret trains an FNG with Buck, the Green Beret, and KDH. I am the FNG. Hey, uh, Buck, I, I'm really excited about what's going on, and um, you know this this movement and the direction that we're going, and. You know, I, I've been thinking a lot about you actually lately because, you know, here you are, you're, you're managing a transition in your life, which you've been through before, um, you know, entering the military, exiting the military, and uh, and now, and then, and then you went into being um, uh, in law enforcement, and now looking like that may be a transition coming up here. But let's let's shift gears a little bit today, and let's talk a little bit about finances, because this is one of the, the areas that... You know, it, it, it stumbles a lot of people. Um, it cripples a lot of people. You know, we, we go through all the stats and what it does to relationships and marriages and every, even health. But let's talk a little bit about finances and a little bit what you're thinking about with finances now moving forward in some of the concepts. And I know you've been, you've studied a lot, even like Dave Ramsey, you know, uh, Full Money Makeover um, as well. So let's talk a little bit about that and, and the importance of cash uh, and, and not credit. So, yeah. so in that, that's a good segue, right, is the transitioning out of law enforcement. And I think a big part of that, and the reason I'm able to do that, is because of the financial decisions before that was a possibility. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think there's a lot of cops out there, especially right now, with everything that's going on, that you know they want to move on. And there's other things that they want to do, but they feel kind of stuck because they just didn't you know, choose the right decisions when it came to their finances. And now they're completely married to that job. You know, not, they tell me all the time, man, I can't believe you're, it's, it's awesome. I wish I could just, and that's, that's one of the things that kind of hurts my feelings a little bit is I, I hear other cops say, man, I wish I could just go do my own thing. And it's like, man, I wish you could too. Like, yeah. I, you know, yes. like I want you to be able to do that too. I don't want you to be stuck in doing something that, you know, you don't feel like is right for you either. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's why it's just important that, you know, we talk about finance a little bit and how we're able to get to this, a little bit of financial freedom. Yeah. And this, this is an area that, you know, the, especially for this podcast that, um, roles can be reversed pretty quickly. You know, I spent over 20 years in the money and finance business and, and I'll tell you this, you know, um, you know, the good book says this is that my people perish for lack of vision. Mm. And there's another place where it says, without a vision, the people perish. So very similar there. And and I have noticed that so many people financially perish because they have no vision for what it is they want to do. Right. And so what ends up happening is, and I've definitely fell prey to this, uh, especially when I was teaching and coaching, Absolutely. is that they get their first paycheck and then they figure out, okay, what's the lifestyle that I'm going to have now that I have this paycheck? Right. As opposed to choosing the life and lifestyle they want to have. And then working to make a paycheck, or, you know, an income around that. So I, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this a ton of times back from military days, even in law enforcement, where you see people get over leveraged. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and what ends up happening, you know, from your experience with guys that do that? So that it's super common in, in military and law enforcement is because it's like, well, here's my guaranteed paycheck. You're not going to get fired likely from the military. It's hard to get fired as a police officer unless you do something crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that lifestyle creep just sets in, and all of a sudden they're you know they're showing up the next day and they got a brand new car, and then they got another car where their wife needed a new car, and then it's it takes no time to immediately just max out that paycheck. But the problem with that, and this is the the fundamental issue that I have, and that a lot of people have, and they just don't realize it, is that we should never feel stuck to a job. Mm. Um, when the military started, you know, things weren't going the way I wanted them to. And, and I felt the desire to move on because my, my wife and I sacrificed and didn't have lifestyle creep. We didn't buy new cars all the time. We didn't upgrade anything. I was able to, to look at her and be like, it's time to move on. She's mm. like, okay. And then the same thing now. So it's just, if you allow that lifestyle creep, then you just get stuck and getting stuck to something you don't love is is probably one in my opinion one of life's like greatest tragedies. Yeah. It's like now I have to do something I don't want to do. You know, we grow up and everyone's like, "Oh, you know, if you just do what you love every day, you never work a day in your life." Yeah, until you start buying brand new cars, and, <laughs> you know, and and then your house is bigger than what you need and and all that stuff. 
Well, and you know, you you can start off a career, uh, even being an entrepreneur. You know, I mean, this is you know the, the new venture that you're really walking into right now, and you may go, "Man, this is great," and I'll never work another day in my life. The newness is going to wear off, All right? You know, at some point, and at some point, once you realize I am doing this for money, mm -hmm. okay, I need to make money doing this. There's got to be something more than just the love of the game, right? You know, there, there's got to be a vision. You know, once again, that that comes back, and so you know, one of the things that I did. Uh, with families, I, re I read a book early on in my investment advising uh, career. Um, it's called Values Based Selling. Okay, great book. It was written in the late '90s by a guy named Bill Backrack. And I'm actually, I'm not trying to steal all of his stuff. I think you should go buy his book. I mean, it's over 20 years <laughs> old. Okay, but but I would tell you, you know, one of the biggest takeaways that I got was he taught how to ask this one question, and then how to build uh, a values values around this one question. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask to you and you know, people be able to listen to it. And the question that he taught was, what's important about money to you? And so it was great because, you know, when I would sit down with families and usually a husband and wife and I'm sitting down with them and I would ask the wife, I always ask the wife first. And so I'd ask her some questions and she would start unpacking some of it. And you could start seeing where the holes were in their finances just mm -hmm. by asking that question, where we needed to go. Um, you would also begin to understand how she looked at money compared to the way her husband looked at money. And once we kind of, once you distilled everything down, you asked us several layers of questions to get through there, then you would generally come up with two camps. You'd either have someone who was really security conscious mm -hmm. or freedom conscious, you know, where they really said what's important about money was security. And maybe they lacked when they were growing up as a kid or they watched their parents mismanage money or whatever, uh, or they would be, you know, freedom. They just want to be, you know, I'm, I'm much more of a freedom guy. So, you know, I, I want, I was like, whatever I need to do to make that happen, I'll, I'll do it. Right. So let me ask for you, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, but it'll be good for us to role play through this so people can see it. But what's, so for you, Buck, what's important about money to you? To me, is the, is the freedom. Okay. So listening to uh, the current book I'm listening to is the one thing. Yes. You listen, it's great. I love that book. So, but he talks about it. And he's, he he went around asking people like, "What's enough money for you? What would make you wealthy?" And you know, a million, hundred thousand, two hundred, five hundred. It was all over the map. Right. And he's like, "Well, that's that's an interesting concept that you have this number attached to what will make you financially free and 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 wealthy." And he was like, "Well." In which I agree with in reality is what I think makes you financially free is that you have enough money coming in that you wake up in the morning and you could decide what passion and your purpose and you could pursue your passion and your purpose in life, which is no easy task finding that. But at least the the feeling that comes from that freedom, you know, it's like we just need your bills paid. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like we don't need Mercedes. We don't need all these fancy cars. My, both my vehicles are paid off. My yep. wife hates her car. You know what I mean? It's got the roll up <laughs> windows in it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, but I bought it brand new. It's been paid off for 10 years. So it's, you know, you have to make those sacrifices. But to me, money is a means to pay your bills so you could live life, so you could have the freedom to focus on what really drives you. Man. I, I I want to tell you a quick story. So I, I had a, a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, that coached me, and he he was talking about when he you know he paid his cars off and everything else. And he goes, you know, it may be not be the newest or anything else. He goes, man, it makes this unbelievable sound when I started up. He goes, <laughs> he, he goes, you know, this is back when you had to put a key. It's you, know, you go you go paid for, you know, and and you know there there's something about that just knowing it. And and I'll tell you. um one of the things that people miss, because I mean, it, it it is there's such an adrenaline, uh, you know, strive to make more money, to get more, and you know, for me, the freedom also. But I'm gonna tell you this: that financial freedom that you want to achieve, there's a peace that comes with it. That when you realize that, you know what? Maybe I want a Mercedes. Maybe I want some of these other things, but I'm gonna be able to have freedom. I'm going to be able to have a peace of mind knowing that I, I'm going to get to play with my kids today mm -hmm. or I'm going to get to, you know, go work out. Or I'm going to get to go shooting today or I'm going to get to go, you know, volunteer at this place or what? Or I can work on a passion right. project. I can work on writing my book I can right. because of all the financial stuff. And usually that number is so much smaller than people yes. are aware of. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And, and having that peace of mind 
is so huge. And so what I would encourage people, and listen, when you're hungry and you want to get after it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You want to go make a million dollars a year? Fantastic. Right. Okay. But understand what, what's that, what, what's important to you about that. Right. Okay. And then understand for some people, they're, they're just ready to go get, yes, go get, go get it all. Right. Go get it all. But you know, maybe you're in a phase that, um, you know, where I am right now, where I'm going, man, I got a 13 year old and a nine year old. I mean, it's crazy for me to think about, but I am just a few months away. I'll have a high schooler, hmm. you know, <laughs> I'm just a couple years away from him driving. Right. And it's going to totally change everything. So I would encourage people, man, really to, to get a vision for their money and finances. And I know, you know, we've talked a little bit about this as well. Why don't you share a little bit about like, cause I think it's good for people to hear a perspective of what a vision could look like for their finances. And I know for you, part of it has been with real estate. So, yeah. you, you know, getting a cash flow from there. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what Buck Rogers, you know, vision for money and finances for he and his family. Yeah. So, uh, for us, Real estate was a huge thing, and and mainly because when we bought our first house, I was terrified, and but we we bought it, and we watched it grow, we watched the equity come in, and but the the buying it just created this passion in me, like it the fire burned, and then me and the wife went in and just remodeled our butts off like constantly, and it became this thing that we did together, and we just loved it. So then we bought the second one, and then we remodeled pretty much the entire house, like stripped it, stripped it down. And, uh, now that one's getting to go to rent and then we're going to start working on the third house, you know, which is crazy growing up. Cause I grew up in a, a trailer, yeah. you know, and in, in, on welfare. Um, so this is always a big deal for us, but money has always been a tool for me and my family just to achieve that lifestyle that we want. And that lifestyle isn't to drive the nicest car. You know, like your buddy said, and the way his car sounds, like it, it really is, you feel different yeah. getting in a paid off car. And then you pull up to some guy and he's got a, a brand new Mercedes. You could you could sit pretty happy knowing that you don't pay anything for yours. Yeah. So even if yours is a Honda Civic, you, the intelligence and the, the knowledge and the wisdom that you gain from prioritizing money, which is one of the hardest things for people to do will outweigh the pride that he feels sitting in that expensive car that he has to pay 800 to 1000 or plus dollars a month for. So for us, the vision is always about the freedom. And, you know, we've made plenty of money. There's been points, I mean, even as a cop, you know, in Denver, those the base pay is like 95 grand a year. I mean, that's plenty of money. And we've just been like, it's it's not worth it. Yeah. You know, so... The, I hope that answered your question, but for us, it's always been just paying, living as below our means as possible. So we just don't stress about money. Yeah. I cannot remember the last time that my wife and I fought about money. Don't get me wrong. We fight. Sure. But I cannot remember the last time we fought about money. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, money is such a stressor for, for a lot of people. Right. And, you know, they, they talk about the number one cause of divorce and all that. And, you know, m making money and having money fixes money problems, mm -hmm. but money doesn't fix relationship problems. Right. Okay. It doesn't fix health problems, but it does fix money problems. Right. And you know, there's a lot of health problems can be maybe go back to that's the health <laughs> okay you know go back to a, a money problem you know maybe some relationship problems are because of that money and so money you know may not cure everything but it definitely cures the money problems and that's one of those areas that um it, when people decide to get control over it man it is so good and it's one of those things that you, you know if you feel out of control in a lot of areas of your life, this is one area you can really begin to get control over. So I'm going to give an idea, a sort of very simple one. And I think you would do this uh, if you want to change your nutrition, if you want to change you know, your workouts, relationships, anything else. It's super, super simple. And that is just for just try it for a month. Track where your money goes. Mm. Literally, just don't change anything. I, I, I don't change any of your spending, but literally – with a pen and a piece of paper, write down, here's where my money went. Yeah, I need to do that. You know, I spent, you know, $3.57 at Starbucks. To, I mean, and, and write it down. And, and then if you'll do this, if you'll dare to take this challenge, start carrying cash. 
and pay with cash. Like, mm. And I know it's tough because right now, you know, uh, there's stores that are saying we, we, we have a cash shortage. We don't have change, all this stuff. Okay, whatever. Okay, right. listen, go, go get some cash. Start paying with cash. And I, there's something psychological because when you reach in your, your wallet and you have to take like that green bag oh, yeah. out, and yeah. you're like, it's totally different than swiping a card. Right. Totally different than scanning your phone and, you know, right. paying Apple Pay or whatever. Um, there's something psychological about yeah. it. And, uh, and it really is. It, it is a powerful, powerful, uh, kinetic um, impression that it makes on you when you actually have to take it. Okay. So. Well, and just a, a quick story for, for my side. So I was listening to Dave Ramsey, Complete Money Makeover. Yeah. And I, I'm over here like doing what a lot of people do, right? Where I have a savings account, but then I also have my debt. And on my cars, you know, my wife's car's been paid off, but my car wasn't. Um, and and I had a credit card that had a couple grand on it, and then I had my savings account. And I had enough in my savings account to take care of all my debt, but I'm just like I'm so comfortable with having this pocket of money, yep. this this nest egg. And then that's one thing that you know, like we were talking about earlier, we don't agree with everything that Dave has to say, but like I said, he's got some really great points. Yeah, and and. One of those, and so a huge step I took, and and the wife had to jump on board with uh, reluctantly, but I just wiped out the debt. So it's like, yeah, that nest egg went away, but I, I, I tell you what, when you wipe out your debt and you don't have a nest egg anymore, your motivation to to build up a nest egg yes. is far more powerful than your motivation to pay off a credit card. Yes. So that credit card will linger and linger and linger. That nest egg, if it's emptied and you're debt free, you will get that back up, yeah. you know, because that's your family's livelihood. So like that hunger in you kicks back up and you're like, I have to get my family money back in that nest egg. But now you're doing it without the debt. So then it, it may take you a while and some, you know, I got friends that looking at their financial stuff, you know, they talk to me about it and it's, they got years, which is fine, but just like working out. You know, each step you take towards that, man, it feels good. And man. it it takes a lot out of the, the stress in life to not have to worry about. And this one thing I do like about Dave, though, is he says that, you know, his purpose for um, being financially free is so he can give more. Mm -hmm. So That's so good. I, I'd be greatly remiss, you know, if I didn't share this. This was, man, I think it was a year, maybe two years ago. Yeah, probably two years ago. Uh, I was sitting with a good buddy of mine, and um, – and he was stressed. He really was stressed mm. financially. H had a very nice, um, you know, made a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but was stressed financially. And um, which isn't that crazy? A I, couple I, hundred I, I thousand know, a year, I know, I and know. you're stressed financially. It's insane. Well, and and, uh, and so he and I, he and I were talking, and he was you know sharing with me everything, and, I, and we you know. Um, totally, really, as as friends. Okay, so he's coming to me as a friend, and. I said, Hey, let, let's talk about this. Where, where are you at? You know, where are you at, you know, with your debt? That was really, cause that was what was stressing them out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he shared a little bit of the backstory and the relationship that his family had had with money, even going back to his parents. And so I literally, he was not at a place where even when I asked him the question, what's important about money? He's like, I, I, I just can't even think of it. I'm just too stressed. And so what I did for him was I was the one that cast the vision for he and his family Oh, cool. About them being out of debt. And so I, I literally just started asking him this question. The question that I asked him, I said, how's it going to feel that come Thanksgiving, um, you're complete, you're having your turkey. And mm -hmm. I literally painted a picture. I said, you're having your turkey and your dressing and everything else and your gravy and you're sitting around with your family and you're completely debt free. You have all this debt. And I literally just, and we, I remember, <laughs> so funny, all, all, I, I'm thinking about all the experiences I get to have, and it's always around food and Mexican food. So I'm literally, ha I remember I'm having Mexican food with this guy, and literally we're at this table, and it's a, it's a grown man. Like, he's, right. got a, he's got a serious beard, all right? <laughs> he's got a grown man beard, not like my little baby girl stuff, okay? <laughs> and he is crying oh, no. at the table. Wow. We had him over the house the other day, yeah. and he was thanking me so much. Nice. And I'll tell you this, you know, part of our roles, um, you know, yours as the Green Bray, me at the F&G, but part of our roles as leaders is to be able to cast the vision for people that don't have the vision for themselves. Absolutely. And to speak into their lives what they need to hear. Right. And so I hope that people here, they just start going, you know what, I mean, what if you could be debt free in six months from now? Right. I mean, it, what would it look, how would the turkey taste different? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. what would Christmas be like if you decided to have a cash Christmas? Right. 
You know, so many people rack it up on their credit cards. They spend the whole next year paying it off. And you know what? And that's the, the Christmas thing. Like your kids don't, they always want more. Right. There is never going to be enough presents under that tree. And so why stress about it? Yeah. Why not give them less presents with a, a, a more open heart because you did it with the cash that all tied into this plan. And when they're opening that one present, everyone's proud of that present now yeah. instead of you just saying, man, I could have pulled out this card and I had a little more, I could bought them a little more. Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, like on deployments and stuff, I was so upset about missing Christmas with my kid that I would send just boxes a day of presents. My mm -hmm. wife would tell me like, stop sending presents. Like there's no more room. You're overdoing it. It's just stop. Yeah. And it's like, okay, fine. So, and she would send me the picture and the tree was just completely packed. But did she, did my daughter, no, she just ripped it, throw it, rip it, throw it onto yeah. the next one. Yeah. So why put yourself in a bad spot for any of those situations or getting in your car and you got leather seats? Yeah. Congratulations, man. Yeah. Like you're still, it's a vehicle to get you from one point to the other. So it, the, the minute we could stop like living up to these, you know, uh, ideas that we need to, to live a certain way. Yeah. And the way that your buddy cried, I mean, that's huge to me because I don't think people understand the power, probably because they've never been debt free or if they were as for a brief moment, they don't understand the power of what that feels like. Yeah. You know? Well, in debt, uh, buying, I shouldn't say buying things usually because uh, on debt is such a dopamine hit. Mm. I mean, it is that quick fix. Man. Oh, yeah. I'll put it right in, in the vein and right. get right after it. But the regret yeah. that comes afterward, it just lasts so much, so much longer. So, you know, if, if I were going to encourage people to walk away with anything from today is one, I think to get a vision, get, get, a, get a vision even initially just to get debt free and then start working toward, you know, that financial independence, you know, get, right. getting that number that you can. And we could talk about diversification. I mean, you know, we could talk a, a ton of different ways about going here, but get that vision and then just track it. Just do 30 days of just tracking where you, or you Start with seven days. Yeah. Start, start with one day. One day. Okay, we can do this. One day, right. just track where the hell you spent your money yep. and then see where you go. So, hey, man, I, I'm super excited about the direction that we're going and, uh, you know, the vision for – uh, this podcast and the movement and, you know, the wisdom that you get to share, you know, coming, you know, with the combat experience as well and the Green Beret teaching, teaching me so I much I want stuff. your wisdom. <laughs> and uh, it is fun, man. I, I love how we're going to be able to bounce back and forth. But, hey, follow us. Give us uh, the the places where people are going to be able to follow us as well. And so, we'll, I mean, we can even just start with the Instagram that you already have set up. So, so BM Customs underscore is the Instagram where it's just personal stuff. There's just war pics. Um things from deployment when I was doing some gun work it's stuff on there but it's a good way to connect and then you know we're going to be expanding uh, pretty heavily on on uh, FNG Instagram YouTube uh, we'll get out some top five tips on YouTube to help people out and yeah. we're just going to try to you know connect everything and and help people help people grow love it hey well thanks for listening to the podcast and uh, man hit us up there uh, on the Instagram and let us know what you want to hear about have a great day and we're out